Street stock is a highly competitive class in Australia and for some people winning a heat race is the best thing they can achieve. For others it might be a feature race. Some are lucky enough to win a state title but for these five gentlemen they have been to the ultimate glory of winning a national title. Gentlemen welcome, we've got Mark Jennings with us, we have Robbie Foe, Anthony Bear, Brad McClure and Jamie Oldfield who between them have won multiple titles across the years. Uh, first of all, uh, we'll just go down the line. Tell us what it's like to win a national title, Mark. Uh, you won way back in 95. Yeah, 95, we went over to Mildura for the Australian title. Back in the old Cortina days, it was good fun back then. Uh, 86 cars, I think, from memory, and uh, we qualified out of position two with a couple of lucky heats. Started next to a female driver by the name of Leanne Weller Walker or something. And um, we uh, got the win. We didn't get it easy, but we got it in the end, so... It was just an experience and after two, three weeks later you still don't even know if it's real. So that's the sort of thing that an Australian title can do to you. Robbie, what about for you? Uh, you went on to uh, win two so far? Uh, yeah, the, like Mark said, the, um, well, he sort of lost the feeling after three weeks. I still get a buzz out of watching. I get a buzz out of watching even um, Mark's title from back in the day. Being at home, I was in the crowd that night. Um, but yeah, the feeling, um, it's... It's different, like uh, I've come second in uh, Proddy's a couple of times and just uh, you aim to win but you don't sort of expect it's going to happen at, at times. You, you want to win, you try your best to win but um, our, our weekend uh, was at Mount Gambia and um, our first night like, we had good speed but we had a couple of things go wrong and then uh, we worked hard on the car for night two and we had to have a good heat just to get into the show and Lucky we did that, and we started out of about 11, I think it was. And, um, yeah, Jamie tore off in that one, and he had a massive lead, and um, Barry had a good lead on me and, and Guardian and the boys. And then, um, yeah, when Jamie's um, uh, machine expired, it, um, it sort of just bunched us back up, and, yeah, it was just a, a mad race. It was, um, I mean, Barry banging off the fence a few times. I banged it off the fence a few times. I had a half a lose. He had a half a lose, and um, Brad come from well back and he was not far behind and I didn't even realise that until watching the video afterwards but um, and uh, yeah Dooley as well they both come from down, way deep in the pack but uh, yeah to get that win and sort of it's not a, it's not anything off the back or anything like you don't it's not a you, you want to win and I, well, I still want to win but it was more the fact of just finally getting a national title just so it was when we finish I'd say, yeah, I won one, and then to, yeah, to go back to back the following year was was pretty cool, especially in Tassie. Um, we loved going over to Tassie, and it, yeah, and um, we had family and friends that went over for that, so that was cool as well, yeah. Anthony, what about for yourself, uh, your first uh, title victory, 2007 Ellis Springs? Yeah, I've um, been way back further than that with street stocks, obviously, seen 90% of them as a kid, watched them, and all I wanted to do was grow up and win a Australian street stock title, so what Foe is saying, I still pinch myself happy, um, I don't think it makes it any easier once you've won, as he said you, you've you got a target then and it doesn't come off your back, so you just want to win and win and win and try again, it gets hard so we've been lucky to got three after the first one, it nearly took me ten years to get it back um, led every one I think in the last twelve years, so it's pretty difficult to be there, so all these boys are fighting you for it, and um, yeah, hopefully we can do alright this weekend with it, and see how we get on Jamie, for you, your first one, uh, 2005, probably one you won't forget for a few reasons. It was the first one you won, but uh, it was also one where you beat both your brothers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the my, the first one I won was at Bunbury, as you say. Um, it was my first, the end of my first season in street stocks. I hadn't done much in street stocks until then. I'd raced other divisions. And um, to get the win, and then uh, we had a, a cruisy run through the heats. We were just lucky a lot of the way. Um, led start to finish, a couple of taps from my brother at the end to uh, encourage me to get going. But no, it was good. Really, um, you know, you can't forget that feeling. To do it with both my brothers there was just, um, you know, a lot better than anything else. And then the next one was uh, 2010, I think it was, Jace. Yep. Um, me and Anthony, I, I come from the C main and um, done it the hard way. Had a real bad run through the heats. Started, I think, 17th in the C main and made me way up to the front of the A. Um, past Anthony and then there was a restart and bunched us back up again and then a couple of laps later Anthony got back by me last lap and uh, thanks to his, his his little mistake I uh, managed to scrape through for the win but no it was good. And what about for yourself Brad, uh, 2006 the first of your three? Yeah 2006 um, 
it was one of my proudest achievements in, in the division of 25 years of racing. Uh, we were sort of under budget to a lot of other guys. We didn't have a name brand engine builder. Uh, we were running around on recap tyres, you know, second, a lot of second hand stuff. And um, it just one of those nights and a lot of other guys know when it's your night, your night, you know, you, you, everything falls into place. A few other guys had bad luck and I didn't have the bad luck. We, 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 we sort of snuck it under the radar, no one gave us a shot. There was a lot of talk about who's going to do well and we didn't even get, didn't even rate a mention. And I thought, oh, well, we'll just keep plodding away. And, and uh, we did that and we started up near the pointy end and, and uh, was lucky to us and, and bad luck for Anthony. He had some car troubles through the whole race actually, so credit to him for finishing where he did. But um, like I said, our, our thing ran smoothly all night and we came home with a win and after many years of racing and we never thought we'd get that Aussie, Aussie title. And once we did that, it, it sort of it lifted our, our profile a bit and our game and we got some more sponsors on board and we started to throw more money at it and the results have shown since then we've, we've done really well. Thanks for that, Brad. Now let's go back to 1995, Mark. Um, what were you racing way back then? Obviously not what we're racing these days. No, we had a TE Cortina with 13-inch wheels with uh, remold tyres, a 250 crossflow with a single throat carby. That was about as glamorous as we got. Oh, and we had Munro shocks too. They were pretty cool <laughs> in the day. And why did you retire after that? I, I kept racing for a while and I enjoyed it. I, I tried a various of cars. I went through a, a stage where the rules changed and my Cortina wasn't going to be competitive anymore. Two barrels come in. So I built a two-door VG Valiant for a while. I actually got it off a bike and put a decent motor in it and I think we won a heat race with it once but that was about it. Then I decided to uh, put that engine into a Centura and uh, that, was the worst thing that, that was awesome, seriously, <laughs> like wheelbarrows with flat tyres would have been easier but that's how we rolled. Then I uh, ventured into the EA Falcon when everyone else was still strong with the XF and it took me a few years but I got my EA going around pretty well and we uh, were leading the title up in Alice Springs a while back and um, we come through the pole shuffle from about 17 I reckon ended up going off the front row with Barry Edwards he was a current Australian champion and got the lead and just went for it and I was guarding sort of leaving a car length on the bottom but not too much and then I was just two-thirds through the race thought someone's gonna pass me and I just got nervous uh, went up high Matthew Nielsen went underneath me I got back to second and then didn't lift for a while and ended up getting a f cut flat tire and watched the finish from the infield so that was one that got away from me so but then after that I just <coughs> some of the politics with the rules changing and bits and pieces and I was just getting over it so I got out of it for a while so. I was going to ask you about your recollections of that title but you've already brought it up. Leanne Weller actually started on pole in that race. That was in uh, Mildura in yep. 95 yes um, she did start she was in an XD Falcon with a single throat carby she was a pretty straight driver she didn't like getting too out of shape. Um, first corner of the final I remember she wanted to lean all over me Cortina, so I, I was on the outside and I thought, oh, she wants to do that. Next corner, she did it again. And the next corner, she went to do it and I wasn't there and I went straight underneath her and left her. So that's how it rolled that night. Well done. Ten years later, Jamie, at Bunbury, um, we mentioned to you 2005, it wasn't that you just beat your brothers. They finished second and third, something that's never happened before and probably will never happen again, where all three brothers finished on the podium. Yeah, that's exactly how it was, Jase. Um, Warren started down the back, I think Jason started in the middle of the field and um, I was off the front obviously and I didn't realise that they were making their way through the field at all and um, yeah, when they got there it was at the end of the race and all three of us pulled up on the pro podium, it was uh, pretty special that's for sure. Uh, we'll move to 2008, Michael Hammond won that race um, but <laughs> yourself and Anthony uh, we're at the front. This is uh, a race at Murray Bridge, and neither of you finished. He wrecked me. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying he, he wrecked um, you. What's he going to say, in no, return? We, <laughs> we had a, a good battle. He, I think he led most of it with the XF, and I just had my EL out. And, um, just an EL. I was the Carby. The yeah, yeah, that's it. Just, I was, I was, I was, the, the, final, I was the fresh one. But, um, Jamie was we, the one putting egg gasket in. Uh, <laughs> I was. No, no, it wasn't every race. I, we had the um, the last heat, I think it was. I had to change a head gasket. But, um, we got going for the feature and we uh, there was myself, Anthony and uh, Mick Hammond going at it hard. We were having a really good run and trying to wind Anthony down through lap traffic and we did get together and bent a rack. And Bowie actually caused that. That wouldn't surprise me. It is. Do you remember that drivers Bowie caused that drivers Oh, probably. He did. But uh, yeah, now ended up at, uh, in the end, Anthony was 
Yeah, he, he was out and I was going all right and Mick Dan came up the inside of me and I slapped it off the fence into Mick and he got a flat tyre so I got disqualified and then um, anyway Mick Hammond, I handed that one straight to him. That was I think the one of two that I've handed <laughs> to him so yeah. We'll get to the other one in a minute. Brad, uh, we went to Carrick and you were the first driver to win a national title in Tassie that uh, Todd Orton hadn't won uh, for many years. Yeah, that was another proud achievement. Um, Toddy was sort of dominant down there over the years in national titles and obviously state titles. But um, our proudest achievement there was uh, we were the underdog again with nearly every car I think in the field was injected by then after Mick Hammond showed how it's done and all the other cars were so dominant at Murray Bridge. Uh, we sort of persevered with the Carby but we had the EL and we went out there with the Carby and um, it was the last heat we'd dropped a piston out of it and we had to swap motors over before the before the final out of another car out of Spizey's car, the sister car. And uh, didn't get a didn't get a practice run or anything. Just hopefully it was all put together right. Put us off the front row with Barry, and he shot off as he does. And we, we chased him down and got to the lead. And then he faded towards the middle. I think he overdrove it as he does sometimes. Put himself on the wall. But um, Mick Dan come through and showed his nose a few times during that race. And um, got down to about four laps to go. And there was a stoppage. And just sort of had to keep my head together. And and uh, we got through with the win. So it was good. 2010, we'll start with you with this one because 2010 involves most of you. Uh, 2010 was the year that Jamie won the C, B and A main. Um, obviously he had a bad run to end up in the C main. After he won the C and the B, were there starting to be thoughts in your mind uh, what might come at the end? Oh look, absolutely. Um, you can't put anybody out, especially of these guys' calibre on this bench here. Um, every yellow light you sort of think, well, you start to try to listen now. They've got the, trend, the um, one-way communicators, you sort of think, Oh, you start to listen to the numbers and he's, oh, he's, he's catching up and he's gaining, he's gaining and um, no race is ever over, especially if you look at last year's results, not over till the, the flag drops. So you, you've got to give it 10 tenths from the start and, and to Jamie's credit, he did it for, you know, 100 odd laps or whatever back to back without a break. So he obviously had the equipment and he had the crew and he had the talent and got it done. What about for you, Anthony? Before Jamie uh, got to you, you and uh, Brad had a ripper race for over half of it, uh, running side by side for a lot of it. Yeah, it's not just 2010. I think I've been a part of nearly everyone's who's had a win. Uh, they've all passed me to win at one point or another, which will probably happen with Mark this weekend, so he'll join the club here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 2010, always knew Jamie was going to be there. Uh, knew me and Brad were going to play the game like we do at the front, and... Um, he buzzed me pretty early and ran off, and then we swapped the lead three or four times. And as I said, I knew all along watching the C main, Jamie was going to be there. The only thing that was going to let him down was car failure. And then, as I said, probably what it would have been eight laps to go, I reckon. He showed the nose and then disappeared, and then I showed the nose, and we weren't there to come second. So we went there for the last corner dive, and it didn't pay off, obviously. But we could have, and it didn't. Ended up on two wheels and into the fence on the last corner. Yeah, in someone else's car at that point. Some bloke had bought it, so it was a really good night in that sense. But as I said, we, when you're along, Jamie's going to be there. And same thing, Jamie did it at Darwin a few years later. He come from the B main once again, ran me down. So you know he's not. doesn't matter what happens. Jamie's either going to run you down or something. So you just got to be there to try and capitalise on it. And was that your best win, Jamie, in the street stop, do you think? Um, in a way, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the work that we put in that weekend was um, crazy, you know, we'd done, I think it was a clutch, a gearbox, uh, two engines um, and a head gasket all in one weekend and to start as far back as we did and then come through the field was, you know, something special. Um, in front of my home home crowd, at one point there was a restart, you could actually hear, you know, you could hear the crowd chanting my name and stuff like that and it was just like, you know, it, oh. I get goosebumps talking about it now, it's just amazing. But um, yeah, it was definitely my best win, but the other one was also special, you know, with my brothers there. And 2011, we'll move uh, to Robbie. Uh, it was one that Brad won at um, your home track, Robbie, at Mildura. We, it was run on a Monday because it basically rained non-stop for two days and you were heavily involved with the club and a lot of work went into actually getting a racetrack available to race on. Yeah, um, yeah that was a... We had um, a lot of rain that day or that weekend and it was 40 degrees during the day and then next minute we've had 25 mil of rain and um, I remember me and Evie Wakefield, uh, we spent about five or six hours on graders just trying to cart water out of the joint. We had pumps in and yeah, we, we knew we'd be get, get a track just for the simple fact of the temperature and we knew that the weather was going to be good but um, and obviously I was doing the track at that stage at home and uh, but we had a, a good guy, uh, Harold Brennan, in the club at the time, 
Uh, he was flat out always on the, the grader and the water truck as well. But I can remember the cars going out. I had to get someone to take the car out for me for the final. And because um, I, I was on the grader and the water truck while they're doing uh, presentations, I just remember jumping out and, and getting in the car. That was a massive effort by our club. Um, well, a lot of people didn't think that uh, after rain was, was happening, which has happened again at that junior title. Um, that the show was even going to be on. But um, we had a pretty good run in that run, uh, race as well, come through, and um, and we got a fair way through. I think we were up just around about Nudge, around about the fifth or something like that. And I remember having a drama and then going back and uh, ended up with a flat tyre. But, yeah, that was a top weekend. And for Brad, it uh, took all day to win it. Uh, yes, it did. Um, that race it took a long time. There's a lot of, lot of cautions, a lot of stoppages. Uh, Barry was rolling around in front of me for the start of the race and the yellow came out and I saw his wheels flopping in the breeze so uh, he just seems to have that bad luck he's, he's fast, he gets up the pointy end but luck sort of eludes him when it, when it counts and the last couple of seasons it's been on his side and, and been against me but um, no, we, we rolled around and uh, we found a nice groove on the track and credit to Robbie and all the guys they got the track going because it was looking doubtful for a while but um, I think Jamie, you got a flat tyre Sitting there under yellow, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, you hear all this over the one way, that, and you look on the infield every time you get a chance to see who's left. And oh, we just kept our nose clean and stayed out in front. And Mick Clark showed his nose once, I think. And uh, just to get through to the finish and, and get the third, you know, we were at that level. With Toddy Orton had three, and and uh, you know, if I didn't race again after that, I'd, I'd be a happy man. You know, I got something to tell my kids, and they got something to tell their grandkids because it's all history. It's etched in, in, on the trophy. It, it's not something you forget about, and no one ever will. It's like even last year's race, to finish second in that close finish, and not many people remember who finishes second, but uh, no one will ever forget that one, and I know I won't. But, um, you know, here's a different event. You know, there's, like, there's a lot of talent on this bench, and there's a lot of talent behind us in the pit, so it's going to be any man's race. 2012, Michael Hammond wins again, but again... Through someone else's misfortune, yours, Jamie. You were a mile in front up at Darwin. Um, and from my recollection, you're going down the back straight and make contact with a back marker and the car catches on fire. Yeah, we, um, same thing as the Ellenbrook title, I suppose. We had a bad run and done an engine and that cost us a bit. And we started in the B main and I think we won the B main and um, started down the back. And I think by memory it was lap 19, I got up to Anthony and at the same time I've passed him, he's got a flat tyre and... You know, so, you know, yeah, I got lucky, but he also was unlucky at the same point. But, um, yeah, we'd kind of run away. Obviously didn't know how much of a lead I had and got under a lap car and we just touched and, um, yeah, busted a rack and pumped all the oil on the exhaust like the Commodores do, but um, caught on fire and that was the end of it. We'll stay with you because in 2013 you also had a big lead at Mount Gambier. <laughs> Radiator hose. Yeah, just a uh, another failure, I suppose. But, yeah, we that was probably... Um, that was Jordan's fault. Yeah, Paul Jordan, give me a piece of shit. But um, anyway, um, nah, that was good. Um, that was probably the first time I think I'd started up the front with Anthony in the titles. We've run hard a few times against each other, but never started together. And um, you know, it was good to actually be on his home track and you know dominate the start of the race and think that you know we're in a comfortable position. And then yeah, blew a radiator hose and spun her out, and that was the end of it. And handed it over. And then Anthony uh, led for a good portion of the race before. Uh Robbie come along and at that stage when Robbie won by 0.226 of a second that was the closest winning margin ever in street stop. Yeah um, had a dive again and we got to the line that time so that was a bonus uh, we don't die wondering so when Jamie gifted me the lead not very often that happens because I said he was blazing in front by about half a lap so we had definitely no answer for him and uh, tried to hold on the lead and thought we were going pretty well and Foey outsmarted me, showed the nose a few times and I got a bit defensive and then made an error by instead of just running away, played the defensive game and good credit to him, he come from 11 and ran everyone down, went through obviously, passed me too from home and then I went to have a dive at him and he made the thing as wide as he could which was what everyone should do and um, he won so it was good to see. And Robbie for you, that was the, the first of your two titles, uh, obviously very exciting at the time. Yeah it was, um, like uh, we'd had just so many... You have so much bad luck over the years at national titles. We'd been off the front row at a few and we had a real good run at Ballarat um, the year that my mate Bart won. And, um, yeah, we thought we were a winner that night and got up the inside of the committee and um, had a clutch come through the floor. And um, and, the, and the, the next lap he then spun out, so two laps later. 
Um, and then we've had, you know, drama. I had one at Tassie. I was off the front. And first night we, we had a real good run and then there was a, an accident that night so they stopped the event and re-ran it the next morning. Well, I spun out all by myself in the first turn and took out like nine cars including or something, me. including Anthony. <laughs> um, but uh, that show, um, like uh, especially me and Gambia, like me and Gambia, is, is, it's like the uh, you've got Alan Brook in WA with so many great drivers and fast cars. Well, that's what me and Gambia is over this way. Um, your Gartners and your Matty Nielsen and Edwards and um, Mark's uh, wing that little brother like they're all all the the guns have been from that club and then obviously then with um, Dooley and the, what Anthony's been able to achieve and um, that weekend we we actually did think that we were going to be thereabouts but we but that's what you got to think if you don't think you're going to be thereabouts well you're just there for a good time and we go to every event for a good time but we think that we're thereabouts we same as this weekend um, we think we're thereabouts um to get that win was awesome. Um, to get the one the next year was awesome. Um, obviously, last year put her off the front, win every heat, and and we had some bits fall apart pretty early in the race, which made it not real good for us. But um, I sort of learned a bit in the last couple of years. Like up to then, I think I was always. I think early on, Anthony would he was able to drive within himself, but just demolish the field, and. I noticed in the last couple of years, there's no more, no one, you can't save a car anymore. Come that final, as soon as the green drops, you, you've got that thing just pinned from the start for 40 laps. If if you're going to lift and try and save the car, you might as well park it up early because the blokes that are around you, especially if one of these blokes comes from back a bit, like if Mark comes out of 20, I'd be shitting my pants for the next 10 laps knowing that that's what's coming. If it's Jamie or... Brad or Anthony, so um, and some of the guys that are in the pits here, like um, like I think Stevie Gardner's up for a fair old weekend. That thing is it's crazy fast at the moment, and he's um, he's a top steer. And there's so it, it, this will be a great weekend. The second title at Carrick in 2014, you didn't you qualified for the final, but not at the front, and you come from well back to win. Yeah, it was pretty much similar to the year before. We'd um, we were caught out all weekend with. Uh, uh, diff ratio we we went there with what we thought and that's what we end up running in the final but in between we went above and below and had gearboxes in and out and at one stage we we, we changed the diff stopped and had lunch went back and put diff in and then realized we put the one in we just taken out <laughs> so then had to change it again i think it was something like uh seven changes that weekend just trying to find a ratio and the very last heat um we had a good win and i think we started at about nine or ten or something like that and early on I just tried to run the line I could look up ahead and I just try and when you're starting back a bit you just want to keep in your mind just to keep sight on the the guys ahead not not the guys in front of you the ones at, at the front like if I see them disappear on the other end of the track well, I'll start you know panicking a bit and I'll start getting a bit anxious and start pulling some stuff back um, but I was able to just see them there and um, Jamie was in a borrowed car and that was, was when he went in the fence that I was able to, I changed one, it was only one turn, I tried a different line and I went, everyone was running the bottom to the middle and just that one turn I just went way above the cush and just thought I'll just try it and just see what happens because the worst that can happen is, you know, a couple of spots or whatever and I didn't pick a spot up but I just felt the car go forward so I just stayed up there and um, yeah there was We'd slowly catching them, catching them. Then there was obviously uh, there was a yellow um, with Brad, and then um, Anthony's front was gone, and then then there was another one a bit later yeah, on. Corey Bald, Corey yeah. Bald hit the fence. Yeah, that's right, and that, that's when Baldy went in. I was actually real lucky. I because I was running that top, and it was on a I went around real hard on the top, and I can just remember I hooked a bit of a rut myself, which give everyone else a gap. And that rut that I hooked saved me because otherwise I would have just been jammed in everyone's crash. And that when they all caved, I remember Toddy flying over the inside guard and I thought that that was going to be it. I thought there would be damage, but um, yeah, it kept going. And we just ran around the top and when you see Mick Clark run on the bottom as he used to in that VS and that thing, especially going uh, left hand, uh, right hand down, sorry, that thing was just a crazy good car. And um, yeah, I, I was... 
I couldn't go to the bottom to defend. If I went to defend, he would have just drove past me, so I just had to stay up there, and yeah, lucky enough. So we moved to 2015, Kalgoorlie, you're all involved apart from Mark. Mark comes back in 2016. In 2015, uh, you had to come through the B main, uh, Robbie, uh, as the defending champion, and you got into the final, but uh, you were one of the first to be eliminated. Yeah, <laughs> as defending champ, obviously we had the, um, you get to go straight into the final, but um, we'd had a, the car was really fast, and we'd been there earlier in the year, and we were happy with it. Just um, a flat tyre in one, um, just got caught up in another guy's hook up in another one, and I hit the fence, and the other two heats we had a first and a second, but that did, yeah, it did put us out of the B, and, and I can remember the old man going, well, what, what are we doing, and and I said, well, I'm going to run the B, and they're, they're like, you're going to run the B? I said, well, why not? Like, if I, I got it, I've only done two heats. Um, the other two, I haven't, I've done two laps of one and two laps of the other. I said, I need some laps. And um, I hadn't actually done a, a race when the track had gone away. Both of me races I finished were on the wet. So I want to do it. And, and I didn't want to go into the final having been handed it, you know, on a plate. I thought, oh, I'm going to qualify it. Because I thought if, if I did the B and I finished fifth, well, I'm in the final anyway. So I thought, then people could say, oh, he only got in because he had that. Which, which as a defending champion, like Barry... Now, he could DNF every race, come from rear, and win. And that's the thing you get from being the champion. So you deserve that, but at the same time, I didn't want to... I wanted to go through. So we finished third in that B, just cruised around, stayed out of trouble. Had a really good run in the final. Car was unreal, and, um, yeah, got halfway through the field, and, uh, yeah, had a, had a diff let go on us, which sort of ended it. But I actually didn't mind, because that was a killer race to watch that one. And, Anthony, yeah, ultimately you led... Uh basically all of it uh, but you had Brad and Jamie uh, behind you or beside you or right behind you or both either side of you nearly for most of it yeah I had everyone throw everything at me um, get back with Foey's quick thing though I think the smartest thing he could have done was run that B main I earned a lot of respect for you with that in the sense is there's more ways you could look at it you took another car out of the final that possibly could have beat you because you see if Jamie was there and he ran fifth and didn't get in the A I would have been quite happy but you know I mean, he was already there so that's you got to look at it that way there's only four cars got in there not five and you earned your spot so that's a bigger bonus as well um, but as you're saying with everything they all threw their cars at me um, I just held a groove and ran the bottom at the start of the race and I was pretty keen as the top was coming on and it was getting rough and I, I geared I changed a diff for the final um, which I don't normally do. I like to have the car the same all weekend, but we took a bit of a gamble because we are pretty good at leading and then falling away at the end of the nights. So I said, with a diff ratio, it was a bit of a gamble, and I ran the bottom, and then um, I think Jamie would have got me, but a yellow come out, and he showed the nose around the top there with 20 to go. So I was lucky enough, and I had a pretty good person on the bank there telling me up the top. So I said to him at the start of the night, I said, I want to run the top, but I'm going to stay on the bottom since the racetrack is. And if you see anyone get up there, first yellow just waved me up and... We went straight to the top and then Jamie was under the bottom and I think it ran out of legs so I was lucky enough he couldn't get past and Brad was there throwing it at everyone and then I stuffed up on the last lap so lucky Jamie's car failed because I drove it into the fence getting the white flag so I would have lost the lead there on the last lap so a lucky one pretty much. Race of attrition, only uh, six finished uh, in the end. Uh, Jamie lapped down with a car that was certainly ailing but you uh, got to the end. We'll now move to last year's title. All of you uh, were there in some, in some way, shape or form. Uh, we all know the result, 0 0.019. Um, what was it like to be in a race meeting where there was 139 nominations, of which 137 turned up? What was the experience like being in the biggest title ever? Oh, it was great. I think a lot of people carried on a little bit and were worried they weren't going to make the final, which is obviously if you drop a heat, you're in a lot of trouble. But if you kept your nose clean and learned something from Mark years and years ago, the more cars, obviously, sometimes it's easier to get in the finals unless you pull a bogan heat. Like, if we're all in one heat, you're in a bit of trouble. But you've got to take that as a bonus. You want to beat them in the final, you've got to beat them in the heat race, and you can take points away from them, hopefully. So everyone was worried they're not making. Um, but as you saw, all the cars that were meant to be in there made it. So um, I think it was good. And be a part of the biggest one ever was really good and then to manage to get it on the last lap was even better which I said I didn't think we were going to get it. What about for you Mark? Oh uh, yeah Ballarat last year it was it was Would good. Would have been way bigger than the one you went in uh, way back in 95. Yeah the cars were bigger too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no look I was pretty lucky it was I was planning to build my own car to get there the title and 
things happen and it didn't happen and had a mate from Adelaide, Kerry Weston, rings me up and said, oh, you're not going to make the title, old son? I said, nah. Oh, well, I've got a shit heap up here. If you want to come and get it, you can drive it. If I don't bust mine this weekend, you can use it. So we went up and then we did some homework. We had to do a show before we actually got there. So we went down to Avalon and had a good night there. Ended up with a 2020 win. And um, the next day we went to Mortlake and run at Darlington there for a few few heats. And that was cool. And then we um, moved on to the title. And just to be a part of it, that's all it was for me. It's been a long time since I've been racing street stocks competitively and stuff like that. And even that day with the car I had, I was sort of... It was good, but it wasn't good enough to be in the A. I was hoping to sneak in, but we uh, first heat were leading it, and Kai Walters went around the outside of me, and you know, don't like getting passed by young kids, but so I tried a little bit too hard and peeled a tie off the rim and finished with a seventh. The next two heats we run two seconds, which was a bit more respectable, and the last heat I had to be in the top four to make the A, and um, did a desperado move around the outside, and we got up to third, and it was a gutter track, and I was just edging past the second, got past him. Just starting edge past the leader, I was pretty confident we were going to get the heat win until the outside CV let go. So we went to a single spinner. We rolled around the gutter for the next laps to finish seventh. So two seconds, two seventh, put me out of the fifth in the C main. We got the C main, but starting the back of the B main on a black track, it was just a one-way traffic. It was full of stuff in front of you. You just couldn't get through. And we got a fair bit of damage out of that. But you've got to be in it to win it. And, you know, we were pretty happy with how we finished that night. I think it was about seventh or eighth in the B main from where we were. We just couldn't have gone any further forward. So looking forward to this year. Now, Robbie, somehow in the biggest field ever, you won all four heats. How is that possible? I don't know. I, um, I had a lot of beer that week leading up to that. I didn't even think that I was going to be um, to, like, win all four heats. I was pretty confident. We went there a bit earlier in, uh, for a show and just to try a couple of things. And we've had a few dramas with the car on the slick, um, just getting it to go around right. And um, Squiggle's done some stuff for us the meeting before, and it, it was a lot better. Like, the car just felt good. Like, it was a lot easier to drive than it has been. It's always been good, but sometimes you've just got to overdrive it a bit. Um, so we were pretty happy with it all weekend. And, yeah, we just... Um, just usual come final nut and bolt checks and um yeah i just uh had a it was actually i had a uh the rubber mountain on the front strut on the outside um pulled through and we a trail and um, dropped a bolt out as well but at the end of the day like you do your own maintenance that's what it is i should have picked up that it was worn and we didn't and it doesn't really bother me you know like we had a good time we still finished six i think um a lot of people have said, like, what happened? You you started off the front and went back. At the end of the day, that's what happens. Yeah. If you you can start at the back and win, you can start off the front, you can she can fall off the car in two laps. I don't really care. We just go to race and just drive the thing flat. Just hold it pinned and hope for the best. If you get a result, you do. If you don't, you've you got nothing. Jamie, you weren't there, but your brother was. Uh, what did he tell you about uh, that title? And you obviously uh, were listening and watching. He wouldn't have said much. He didn't do much. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he did much at all, Jase, to be honest. Um, yeah, obviously I would have loved to have been a part of it, but we, I think I was racing the late model back home, so we didn't get to make it. But, um, you know, uh, to have so many cars at one track for what I say is the best division in Speedway is a credit to, um, you know, the whole division itself. But, um, yeah, as for Jason, I'm not too sure what he, what went wrong there, but I think he was pretty average. <laughs> and, Brad, for you, we all know what happened, uh, point zero one nine. Um, I said in the call with, I think, eight to go, you won't be caught, but you were. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, you put the mock on me. Um, uh, it was credit to Anthony. Like, we, we held the line, what we thought was a good line from once we got through, and we just kept the same line. I think hitting our marks every lap after lap. And uh, his car come good at the end, and... and and you know, when you're in front, you don't know what's going on behind. And uh, unfortunately for us, I think the white flag come down and he showed his nose about the same time. And, you know, I like to think that I'm a fair guy. I give him plenty of racing room up between myself and the wall. And, and pretty much until the start finish line, I think it was when the flag was coming down, it was, it was uh, all bets were off then. But, um, no, I think, uh, like I said a bit earlier, I was proud to finish, you know, just finish that race, I suppose, with all the entries, even, even starting it. But um, no one's going to finish, forget who finished second in that event. Obviously, uh, social media keeps reminding me of it nearly every chance you get. <laughs> and, um, no, like I said, I hope we can do a little bit, that little bit, like half a wheel better this year. Um, we're not here to win. We're not here to, to crash. We're, we're just here to have a good time, be part of it. Uh, I'm passionate about the sport. 
definitely passionate about the division and uh, every year it just seems to go from strength to strength the, 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 the um, presentation of the cars just seems to get better and better and it's a credit to everybody and finally uh, now that we've covered all the titles we're here at Kingaroy it's a showground venue uh, Street Stock have never held a national title here in Queensland before four years ago Street Stock weren't even racing here in Queensland Guys, what are your expectations uh, for this event this weekend? Uh, very hot conditions. We're at a showground venue, but somewhere where you guys have never raced before in a national title. Uh, what are your expectations? Start with you, Anthony. Uh, I think we know the expectations by the form that's been going on. There's a couple to be going good. I think these two here are probably the best around right now. So with Mark and Foey, we saw that Mildura early in the year. Mark's been hosing us. Um, Track-wise, I hope we don't get one of the first heats. It's a very, very difficult little racetrack to pass on until the track goes away. Uh, when it goes slick and black and then big holes in it, I'm hoping it will and we'll be there then and hopefully we can get a good heat in the first heat, come somewhere good in the final and then we'll be dialled in for that. So, as I said, I think Foley and Mark will be the two to beat in that sense, but it's all going to determine on heat one, I think, with the draws. OK, so Robbie and Mark... Uh out of you two, who's going to win then? Uh, looks like the rest of us can go home. Oh, well, that's all we've all been told, I think. <laughs> I think it's my turn. I'm closer to retirement than all of these kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, this year we've got a car that we're driving. Reg and Patriot Motorsport, he's very passionate about it. Um, you reckon? Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> but look, he's, it's good to be involved with someone like that. I, I was never like that. I was sort of a bit happy-go-lucky and just do the skids, you know. But um, he's made me lift my ante a little bit because he's so passionate about it. The car's exceptional to drive. I fit in it, so that helps. Um, but look, it's a strange title. You know, any one of these guys in the pits could win it, really. You know, everyone lifts their game at an Australian title. We all race at 10 tenths. But when a title comes out, it's 15 tenths that she's on, you know. So look, my aim with a car that's this good is to qualify in the top 10 and hopefully finish in the top five. Any more than that is a bonus. A win will be good, but look, finishing will be good too, especially with this crowd here that we're running with. So that, that's what I'd be happy with. But the win will be good for sure. What about yourself, Rob? Uh, yeah, well, obviously we've come up here and we've run here before, and um, it's a tricky little venue, like Anthony was saying. It, it is pretty hard to pass here early. Um, but uh, I've been watching a bit of racing up here from this season. I come up each year... Uh, with the modifiers and the track does look a lot better now than it has been the last couple of years um, it does look, look a little bit more drivey than it has been i think with so many stockies it's it will get a little bit rougher and um but so uh, anthony's he's there about he's uh, obviously started the year he's had a few dramas that one at Mildura, he run that with no power hook he doesn't tell anyone that but that's why he didn't win um well, if anyone thinks that uh anthony's not the favorite they're kidding themselves he's uh pretty much proven and, and like I said before the the last couple of years or probably three or four years there's no lifting now you once the gate closes and the green drops if if you if you if you're thinking about going you've already lost a couple of spots it's, I'll be just every heat just drive the thing flat um, I know these blokes will they might say that they're going to reserve this reserve that but it's it's flat and um some of the guys that have come up from Victoria, there's um, NSA and obviously from <coughs> WA to come up and race at this first title in Queensland. I, I honestly thought that 55 cars would be a, a good number. So when um, on the close of noms and they said there was 73 or 4 or whatever nominated, um, yeah, that did blow me away a bit. And just the quality that's here is it's it is second to none. All the fast ones are here, and I'll be giving it my best. What about for you, Brad? Oh, look, to me, I just treat it like another event. Every every event I go to, whether it be national title or club show, I try to present the best I can with what I've got in the shed at home. Um, if I, I've got to do it 110% or I don't bother doing it at all. Uh, like these guys, you know, they know themselves, they've been doing it long enough. You can't leave anything un, unsta uh, any, any stone unturned because that's the thing that will bring you undone. Every chain is only as strong as its weakest point, so to speak. Yeah, you know, you've got to do a lot of homework. You got to, as Robbie said before, bolt checking is important. Um, you got to sort of do a bit of homework on who you're up against in your racing, because yeah, someone can bring you undone pretty easily. Um, it, not all, all these names have been mentioned, but there's a lot of guys back behind us. Uh, Lenny Bates come up here to, to do a show, and he won, and he's been fast back home. 
And there's a lot of local guys that have been doing laps around here and they're going to be strong as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's never over till it's over. And Jamie, finally to you, uh, from a West Australian point of view, you've travelled a long, long way to be here. Um, your expectations, you have raced here before in late models? I have, yeah. I've uh, been lucky enough. National title for the late models was here a couple of years ago and I run second in that through an error of my own on the last lap. But um, no, Michael Hammond wasn't involved, was no, he? No, Mick Hammond didn't win that one. <laughs> Darren Kane did. But um, no, nah, look, it's going to be great. You know, the first time in Queensland, as Robbie said, 70-plus 70, 70 cars to turn up to a national title in Queensland. It's a long way to go for everybody to come up. Um, I'm lucky enough to um, be helped by Paul Razum with his, with his outfit and brings the car up, so I get the easy way of just flying over and driving the car. I haven't done much um, stocky racing this season, um, but, you know, my expectation is I want to make the A-Main. Um, I thought that was Anthony's car. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it was going to be at one point. I'm not sure what happened there, but um, but Brooks car. Everyone has a drive except me. Yeah, it is a bike at the moment, but um, yeah. Now my expectation is to make the make the the A main. That's the start. Um, clearly, Num Nuts here is going to be the favourite by far. Anyone that starts off the front row of national titles 150 times in a row, he's he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be the favourite. You know. Um, as they've already said, uh, Mark's on fire at the moment. He's got that FG singing and Lenny Bates, and there's, you know, there's plenty around that can win. Um, I think anyone that makes the A main is capable of winning. Um, I think it's going to be a good show, and I just, yeah, I think Robbie's still talking about Mick Dan not inviting him to racing last night to Gimpy, but I don't know what's wrong with him. He's, he's turned to a girl, I think. But um, but no, nah, it's going to be a good show, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I was really looking forward to this chat coming into today. It's been a lot of fun and uh, learned a lot today. And uh, thanks, guys, for being with us this afternoon. I hope you all have a great title and uh, may the best man win. Cheers. Thanks, Chase. Thank well, there we go. We've got five national champions with us. They've given us their expectations of what should be a ripper weekend here at Kingaroy. Stick with us. All the action coming up very soon of what should be a ripper title here in 2016-17.